great. Today's section, we will look at some few questions on both functional budgets, master budgets, if possible, functional and master budgets. That's the exception. That the next meeting, we will look at flexible budgets and then cash budgets. Perfect. So let's quickly go through this these questions. Uh, question number two is on number three. Uh, maybe a basically the same, the same question. Um, budgeting is an effective management tool in business decision making. Explain four reasons why budgeting is important and state four conditions necessary for effective budgeting. Great. So something like this, there are two questions in here. Four importance of budgeting, why budget is important, and four factors or conditions that will make a budget more effective. That's all. The four importance of budget, just bring out the objective for budget to control for planning purposes. Planning purposes. So the examiner. Planning purposes. So, importance of budgeting to compile planning to for controlling, effective control. So, for controlling, three, for communication. Wow. Yes, budgets help us to communicate policies, the communication of both policies, strategies, and ideas. So we have for budgets, we can communicate our strategy and ideas out. Take notes of the good news of our budgets. For, for better coordination, right? For motivation, for decision making. That's all. That is important of your budget system. Please and please again, some of this important can be also valid for standard costing or standard cost. Now, and four conditions necessary for effective budgeting. Four conditions. So what should be there so that the budget will be effective? Uh, number one, in fact, the perfect. Now, the ways in which the budget will be effective or the factors, condition that will make the budget be effective. That is not enough. Now, before the budget will be effective. Number one, we need to make accurate estimates. The estimate that is what accurate, a reliable estimate. So number one, there must be a reliable, reliable and what accurate, accurate estimate. If all the time your estimates are not true, it will affect. The effectiveness of your budget. Number two, third examiner, that before the budget will be effective, the top guys need to support it. The top level management need to support the budget. Sometimes, after they implement the budget, the top level set out, sit at back, and watch the middle line managers to just carry the budget. No. So, support from the top level management. That is, I mean, uh, support from where the top level management knows of the cutting exams. Number three. Number three. If you want your budget to be most effective, then it must be from the preparation stage. So you need to allow a lot of people partake in the budgeting process. So 
then there might be a participatory type of budgeting. So if you allow the middle line managers to partake in the budgeting process, that is all. So that is what I mean, allow the middle line or, or the lower the lower level sorry the lower level allow the lower level management to partake in the budgeting process that's all allow them to partake because if they partake in it in fact everybody respect the law that said by yourself or you involved in the law or the decision making process than to sit at somewhere and if impose the budget on you that one you don't respect is mm, their budget you mention it like their budget their budget meanwhile it's for your entire organization so if you are involved all oh, our budgets if you are part of the other one our budgets and you carry it with all your strength and so now budget for budget to be effective that examiner there must be what reporting of variances report all variances and investigate so investigation and reporting of what variances that is done and then it must be a reporting and investigate of what variances for instance we are in 2011 budget there was a huge variance nothing was mentioned about it 2012 bobo 2013 bobo 2014 bobo so now the budget has become a traditional culture or something that we require just for formality. Now, 2015, what will make this budget effective? In fact, even the previous year's variants are not being investigated. So the one that we are going to prepare now probably will not be effective because ah, Previous years are not reporting any variances. So if you report variance on that particular budget, it will make it more effective. Good. Don't forget to tell the examiner these stories. Good. Don't forget to tell the examiner these stories. Nice. Right, so, so these are some few ways to make the budget more effective, basically. I pick one critical national budget to go through. Now, the second part is about master budgets, in which you look at it after our first national budget first then. Good. Abby is the question three. Just to play go to a question called similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's similar. New limited. Uh, I look out for different questions. Has all these questions have been solved? One one of the lecture features so let's try let's try now let's look at this um functional budget question kindly um use the previous lecture video to go to the main sections that are a bit advanced so let's see Uh, you are required to prepare the production budget on monthly basis for the first quarter of 2016. Three marks. 
prepare labor budget for the first quarter of 2016, showing both our labor costs. Assume that all production workers work at least 160 hours a month. Let's do something here. Let's start. So, in fact, we need to prepare production budget. If I want to prepare production budget, it's one of the functional budgets. Good. Now, functional budgets, they say as well, departmental budgets. Good. Departmental budget. Can we use question seven, the video for question seven, for a full picture of what functional budgets? Thank you. Now, functional budgets is just a budget prepared by the various departments. Various departments. So, civil so department bring their budget, production bring their own, procurement, admin, R&D, and then the other department. Along the day, the accounts for the finance section have to collate all these financial budgets to form what you call the master budget. That's the budgeted profit and loss and financial position. That is all. So, first, right here, I choose a production budget. Production budgets. Production budget. Now, with the production budget, uh, any kind of for production budget, and then um, if not given it to you as in a form of estimating, forecasting, or increasing, then it means that. You need to start from this angle. Get your sales so much less your open inventory so much and add your closing inventory. That is all. This gives you the production budget. You are done. No love story. They can ask you for maybe first month, month one, month two. And then demand to what? Three, basically. So you can do for the periods. So take note of the production budget. Good. And then next, oh. Okay, so this question, that's how I won't do it. By the quarter, for the first quarter of 2016, on a monthly basis, first quarter of 2016, so that means I'm going to prepare for January, February, and March. So let's go. I put production budget for month one, month two. For month one, I'll put January here. I'll put February here. And then I'll put what? March. How do you get it? Good. Then I'll go to the question and look for the sales, open inventory, and closing inventory. That is the end of the game. And if you're in, so quickly. the question. It says that uh, we need to let me tell you the manufacturing company situated at the Julie Food that produce chemicals for oil production. The company is preparing it budget for the coming year never to be able to sell 10,000 pounds of only good at the sparkle oil in January to 10,000 so to 10,000 January. Fine. And then the sales are then expected to rise to 11,000 pounds. Uh, and then the sales are then expected to rise to 11,000 pounds in February and 14,000 pounds in March. And then remain stable for the rest of the year. So that's the end here. The sales figure for all these three months will be. Um, yes, units, units, units. But that is an answer. So, sugar appears to be divided. I need to write it small. 10,000 units. So, I'm reporting the units 11,000. And then you get something like 12,000. I mean, basically, let's continue the game. And Let's continue. Now, with this inventory, don't expect the examiner to give you open and closing at the same time. No. 
those yes. products. They will give you only closing. You know that closing is balance for this pair become open for the next pair. That's all. So okay, kindly look for the closing inventory, step it, and then that is all. Be pushing it forward. So they are saying that the manager is able to carry a finished inventory at the end of each month because of the percent of the following month sales. So and yes, what's the closing inventory? So I will start from this is December. Let me start from December. So let me write December here. January here, February here, and March. Let's find the closing inventory. 10% of what the following month. So if I'm in December, the closing inventory will be 10% of January sales. What January sales? In fact, this inventory is 14,000. Thank you, man. I don't know where I got the 10, 12,000 from. Good. So December, January sales is what? 10,000. Now, when we strike 10% um, on this figure, we'll probably get what? 1,000, right? So the closing inventory for December is 1,000. January to be 10% of February, so that becomes 11,000. Sorry, 1,100. And then the product of February, it will be 1,400. What about March? Who will tell us March? March. Meaning in March, March means it must be 10% of what? April. But in the question, they told us that and remain stable for the rest of the year. Meaning that for the rest of the year, still 14,000. How we get it? Good. So here's 3,400. Perfect. So now let's bring it in the our calculation. So now closing inventory for January is 1,100. So we say uh, let's open inventory and then add the closing inventory. Closing inventory over here is 1,100. Over here will be and then over here to be over here we are getting 1400 this one 2400 let's record the open inventory now open inventory for sorry closing inventory for december will be what open for january so this thousand we push to january so january our half thousand has open don't forget to subtract it i'll explain why we are sub we are subtracting it. Closing inventory for January will push towards February as well, open inventory. Now this will be pushed here as well, open inventory. Now what are you seeing here? Have you seen that? You realize the open inventory is the same as 10% of that year sales. That is all. But if I find 10% of the targets, 10% of the targets. So in events where they don't give you other ones, you can also use this analysis too. Get the open event for Okay, so basically, now what will be the production? So, all right, here production is in units. So, let's see. Um, this will be 10,100, right? It's going to be 11,000 and then, so 11,300, right? Can you confirm the calculation? Because it's a guesswork. Yes, to 14,000, right? Okay, so basically this is how we are going to look at for the production. That is all. So anyway, you're looking for production to manage, can you go through these sections? Sometimes I like the example will give you the closing inventory. Straightforward, like question number seven. Good. Now let's go to the next question. And then we are done. 
In fact, I will from here I'll quickly scan to the last of the questions for you to answer your second question. Now, uh, let me see so the production budget for three solid marks. Each column is called three marks. Sorry, um, a mark. The second section is prepare the labor budget for the first quarter of 2016, showing both hours and labor costs. I think that all production workers work at least 160 hours a month. Let's go to the board. Labor budget. So this is I. Tell the examiner. I I labor board budget. That one too, we have it in hours and then we have it in what? The amount. So let's do the hours first. So in the racket, hours, and write in full slash word cost. Alice. So I have to put my January, my February, my March in here. Now, if I'm looking for labor budget, then it means that if I'm looking for the hours, I should be able to tell the total hours required for the next coming period. What is the total hours required? It all depends on my production. I'll be it all depends on my production. Now, these production units, are we are going to, or we have determined for the company. We bring it here, start so the production. Production like this. So here, they must produce 10,100, 11,300, and 14,100. Even if I cannot do anything in the question, not this, and leave my hand on it. Now, then I will tell the examiner hours required. Hours what required. So if I want to produce a unit of the products, how many hours do I need? That is all. So let's go and look for those hours and then the cost. So if we start from here, each stack of oil takes two hours to labor to make. That one is enough, two hours. Let's go. So if it's two hours, it's going to be two hours, two hours, two hours. So can you tell me the total hours required? So this is the hours what required. So that's the hours budget. Hours required or total hours required. So that becomes the budgeted hours. That's 2,200. And this will become 22,600. And then 28,000 for the last section. OK. Now, when do we have it like this? We are done for the first section, the hours. That is all. That means in coming for the year, we need to make 20,200 hours available in January. That is all. Now, when we move on to the cost, then we need to ask ourselves, how do we pay our labor cost? The first question we need to ask ourselves is this. Do we have all these hours available? If not, can we employ? If not, can we do over time? What will be the cost? So you're going to determine the cost. That is where those questions have to come in. Let's go to the question whether, because the standard said we should do the cost, the labor cost. So that means you need to ask ourselves those questions. Let's go. Now, it says that Workers are employed on contract that require them to work a minimum of 160 hours per month. So each month they have only 160 hours. So what will be the hours available? 
So if there are 132 production workers and each of them work for a minimum of what, 160 hours, therefore what will the total hours available? Good. And are each paid 1,280 Ghana cities a month? That's all. So we can calculate the rate per hour. So that means each. So if they are paid 1,280 per month and they work for 160 hours per month, so that means 160 hours is going for 1,280. What's the rate per hour? We can have it by ourselves. How we get it? Good. So let's see something in here. So now tell me the total hours available. So let's do something. So right here, total hours available. Total hours available. Good. So total hours available will be each month they have 132 workers, production workers by 160 hours minimum work. That's the hours available. Now let's continue reading the question. I think production workers are highly skilled and require a minimum of one year training. That we can't employ anyone for shortage. In the short term, it is not possible to recruit any more production workers. Then the only option available is use work over time. If you can recruit, use over time. Any other hours required in excess of 150 hours per hour are made up by over time. That is paid a basic rate plus over time rate of what 48 percent of the basic. So basic plus over time premium. So you cover the pay. Now let's cover the total hours available and see the number of months, which of the months that they need work over time. Now the total hours they have is 160 hours each month by 132 production workers. So what's the total hours available? If you, so 21,120 production hours available. So that means I'll do something like this, 21, each month, don't change it. It's a minimum requirement. And they cannot increase it, no, decrease it. So tell me in months where they need over time, if possible, so over time hours. Over time hours, if possible. So generally, they need 20,200 hours, but they have 21,000. No, they have more than they require. So there's no need for what? Over time. So generally, over time hours must be dashed. No need. But in February, they need 22,600 hours. But they do have what? 21,120. So we need what? Over time over there, because what we need is more than what we have. So therefore, we are lacking if we want to go further. So therefore, find a difference, and that becomes the overtime hour. So 22,600 less 21. So that's 1,480. Let's go to March. March, the same thing happens there. March to 14,000. Uh, we have 28,000 hours. That's what we need. But we only have 21,120. So much, we have 6,880 of our time hours. Now, why are we looking, burdening ourselves with our time? Usually, what happens is this. the basic pay is for how to build our time. But time is to entice the guy, but the guy is working at the hours that he's supposed to rest. So you should pay him extra. Uh, so that's why, because it's called for a different fee. So you can end the labor hours for now and we'll continue the cost. So I'll clear the top and continue the cost from there. And that is all for this particular question. In fact, I'll solve class certain functional budget. I don't forget to watch or go to the video, the very first video of functional budgets.
to get a full picture and get an understanding of what you call principal budget factor. Okay, so right here, cost is still under this. It's still, sorry, it's not coming through. So, start with the cost. So, my January labor cost. My general will be here, my February, in fact, my March, she also come here. My Ghana cities, I am reporting in Ghana cities, but this will be in there. After the examiner, the labor cost is made up of two items. Number one, the basic salary plus the overtime, premium or the overtime, hey, that is all. So let's record the basic salary, the basic. So the basic pay, basic pay will be, or the basic salary. Now, how many workers? What's the minimum amount you give to them? The workers are 132 by 1,000, Or alternative, alternative. We can cover the rate per hour. Alternatives, you can have it what the rate per hour. The rate per hour can be calculated as what? 1,280 divided by the 160 hours. You get something like eight cities, right? Good. So if it is eight cities, and each of the minimum, each month we are going to work for 21,120. If I multiply the ACD by 21,120, it must give me the same answer. No difference. So what do you get? What's the basic salary? Any of these approach should give you the same answer. So what do you get? So 132 by 1,280. So that's the basic salary that we should pay them. 168,960. So 100, 168,960. And it will be the same drop. But each and every year, the basic is fixed. But, uh, to... okay. Or you can also multiply eight Ghana cities by what? by the total minimum hours of 21,120. You must also give her the same answer. Perfect one. Let's move on to overtime. And at the end of the game. Overtime, hey. So overtime, hey. Let's go and calculate it. There's another give it to us in the question. So we are saying that end up over time that is paid at basic rate plus over time frame of what forty eight percent of basic. So that means the overtime pay will be the basic. Let me claim some parts of the game. So I can do some small work in there. That means over ten pages equal to the basic plus forty-eight percent of what the basic. That is all. In which we know the basic to be what the basic pay happens to be eight Ghana cities. Basic pay is eight cities plus forty-eight percent of what eight cities. Put these two together. What do you get? Or oh, that examiner is equal to one point four eight times a series to give you the same answer any of them you are free to go what's the answer 12 points good so the one time premium is what 11.84 that means any overtime hour need to be valued at what 11.84 that is all so let's start january no overtime so here might be what dash because there's no overtime in january 
But when you go to February, the so time hours is what? 14,480. You multiply by what? 11.84. And that is all. Let's see how best we can look at that. So get 17,523. So 17,523.2. And that of March, you value it by what? 6,880. So 6,880 by 11.84. And that'll give us an answer like to get 81,459.2. Basically, dot two. So basically. Now put the two together, and that's the end of this particular game. That is the end of this particular game. So total cost or total labor cost one six eight nine six zero. Okay, so putting all this together, you find it total, and that's all. And that's all. Okay, let me please come through the latitudes. Question to move on. 186,000, 186,000 or 88.2. Okay, so you can fill in the remaining ones. One. Okay, so quickly we will scan through last on that. November 2020. Quickly, I'll be very fast in here. Now, I require on the basis of the preceding data and projections, prepare the following budgets production budget for October in units, direct material purchases budget for October in plus, direct material purchases budget for October in cities. Okay. Direct manufacturing labor budget for October in cities. Income statement for the month of October 2019. Income statement for the month of what? October. So everything is in October, October. Okay, I'm sure it's for a reason why it mentioned October throughout all the requirements that just put inside the head. On the basis of that, I prepared the following budget for the month of what, October, but if indicated it individually, then there's an issue. Uh -huh. Give me July, data, August, September, October, November, December, and that is it prepared only one month. So it's not common, right? That is why they indicated it individually. So let's see. The firm, okay, let's start from B. Maybe companies management want to prepare budget for one of these products. So, October 2019. The firm sells the product for 75 Ghana cities a unit. So, that's the selling price. That is where the income statement. And how the following expected sales in the unit for this month in 2019? Okay. So July, sales unit is there. Okay, September, October, November. So why are you giving all this? No, I need it for only October. It tells you that some of the closing and open balances will be entering into the previous previous month and the next month. So no wonder they can tell, okay, closing inventory should be 10% of the next month on or 25% of the next month or next two months. Uh -huh, in that sort of that is why they are giving more than that. Let's go. 
The reproduction process required five kilos of barley and three kilos of ginger. The firm policy is to maintain an ending finish push, meaning that is a closing inventory of products. Now, when I give you questions, can you locate the products from where the materials? In this question, if I should end here, the product is called Tomacan, but the materials are Atari and what? Ninja. Good. Now, the first policy is to maintain an ending finished boost inventory. Okay. Inventory each month equal to 15% of the following month's budgeted sales. But in no case, less than what 1300. So at any point, it shouldn't be what be less than 1003. If you calculate it's less than 1000, what do you do? Take the 1003 and do the figure. Um, so 15% of the next month. So if I should find the closing event for start from September, closing event for September will be what 15% of what October's own 9000. Was the inventory for October to what 15% of what November and in that order? That is all perfectly. Now, when you go to the exams, the examiner is telling you this. Let me give you just a trick or secret about this inventory. What is it? Inventory is 15% of the next month. If I'm in October and looking for open inventory, the same as 15% of October sales. That is all. That's the secret. Because if I stand at September, and calculate the close inventory. I will always pick the October's own and start my percentage on. And it's closing for September. It will be open for October. So the same as me just starting October and picking the October sales and start the percent on it as an open inventory. That's all. So they could have just deleted the September's issues from there. You can still find the open inventory. Those are oh, the term was not given, so I can't find it. No. In fact, the truth of the matter is that anytime closing inventory is strike on the next month's sales, open inventory is the same as that month's sales. That is all. Open inventory is we strike on one that month's sales. Uh -huh. So we should take note of that. So if I should end here, I can easily calculate the production. Yeah. Please, you don't need to read all before starting calculating it too. If you get what you need, the rest is not out of the game. From here, no, you can just have a production. Because production is three items. Sales is here. Closing inventory and open inventory. You can also get it from the 15% given to us. That is all. So let's do that. Let's quickly look at the production and then take off the production from the game. So, Max. Okay, so here I tell the examiner, but it is I production budget. Even though the examiner asks for the month of October, I'll do the examiner good and add November, but November is not part of the solution. You're only looking for what? October. Just October. Uh -huh. So I'll use the pencil to write November. Yeah. Okay, so if I'm looking for production, I'll just write what I need. Production should be um, sales, less what? Open inventory. Add your closing inventory. That is all. Add your closing inventory. 
I'll go to the first end, look for these figures. I am done. The mere fact that the question is just a full page does not mean I cannot get these few facts from it. The rest, I'm not saying it. So let's see. Sales so for October is 9,000, Good. So basically, that's Okay, so let's go to the question. So sales so for October is 9,000, November is 10,000. So let's read, record it. Let me put unit here. Units, I'm reporting the units. Yes, should be 9,000 and yes, should be 10,000. I saw. Take note, this side is not part of the requirement. So if you're doing it, don't expect any marks. <laughs> Can be for workings. The actual solution is just this one. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's quickly look at. Now they are saying that the closing inventory is about fifty percent of the following month's budgeted sales. So fifteen percent of the following month's sales. So if I'm in October. 15% of November, that's 15% on 10,000. And don't forget that it should not be less than what? 1,003. Thank God this is 1,005. It's not less than what? 1,003 because it's a quota. So it shouldn't be less than 1,003. So open inventory, but closing inventory here becomes 15% of Greece. So that would be 1,500. If I'm in November, November's own becomes what? 15% of what? December's balance, 11,000. And that would be? So that's 1,650. 1,650. I'll go to the open inventory. Anytime the Zanna is telling you that maybe October, uh, September, we get a closing inventory by London. A percentage on the next month on if the closing it becomes open here so in the same as you find it all the open event becomes that month sales times that percentage so open event for october is 19 by the 15 percent of 9000 so let's look at 15 percent of 9000 and that'll give us um, 1350. Number is not less than 1300. If it's less than 1300, I'll pick this one. 15 percent of this, in fact, closing for October becomes open, which is the same as what 15 percent of this. So, I don't need it for the production, and this going for two marks. I mean, the result is very good. Yes, it's very good. Very good. So 9,150. But if you do this, it's going to stop two marks. And that is all. We do this two marks for you. What about 2000 and um, November? 10,150. Why? Are they going for 150 challenge? 150, 150. 9 and 10. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that was the very first one. Let's move on to the second department. Basically, the second department. The second of is saying that direct material purchases, direct material purchases for October, direct material purchases. Down to the same show, direct material purchases down to the same show. To get a direct material purchases, let me do it here. For this one, I want to do for October. So I, I, I. Direct material purchases. That is I Direct what? Material purchases. Purchases. Direct material purchases. You have to for only the month of what, October. Good. Now to start with your production or your material usage. That is I you should know the material usage. And here, because it's about material, 
can you record your material as heading? So can you record your material as what? Heading. So what are the materials? Okay. Now, what you have to do is this. Put October here. Now, what are the materials in this particular question? The materials are two. Mention them. They are uh, five kilos of atari and three kilos of what? Ginger. So the material is only atari and what? Ginger. So third examiner. Atari and then ginger. Good. We need our material usage. The format for material pages. First of all, let's talk material usage. Second, let's open what? Inventory of material, then kindly add back, add back closing inventory of what material that is all. The same procedure as this. Now, let me add this. I was in production, if we're a manufacturing company, a trading company to buy, so I can also ask you to prepare purchases, goods, purchases, budgets. Or a trading company, so that production is like what purchases. This type of purchases for material, so that's why we are distinguished from what the actual purchases. So take note: a manufacturer what will produce, but a trading company or wholesale company, or retail company, when what buy. I will get it fine. So, now, so let's go to the question. We we'll look for all this item. It just need to get the in-depth knowledge of this so that anywhere that I'm not class will be fine. Let's go. Let's come to this. Let's consider from here, the material. It's all materials, all materials, both Atari and Ginger. All materials even maintain at what? 10% of the production needs for the next month. What's the production? Production need simple means material or using for the next month. So for the next month. Okay, so 10% of it for the next month. 10% for the next month. Okay, so mean I need to add the next month on to it to try to help me. Have you seen? Good. So let's try. So that one too, don't, this is not part of the solution. I'm adding the month of November. This is October, this is November. Then add November here. Attack it and what? Ginger. Good. That one is for November because I need to find 10% on it and bring it forward. Let's go. Let's see. But not a seaboard. 3,000 kilos, not a seaboard. So if you calculate this more than 3,000, what do you do? Pick 3,000 and absorb. The firm expects all inventory at end of September to be within the guidelines, meaning that the guidelines, like they should follow the same rule. The picture is the part that expects the material to cost 1.75 per kilo and 5 CD per kilo for ginger and Atari, respectively. And it's all. So let's see. Now, if they want to produce trade, how many kilos of the material they need? So for Atari, they need five kilos. For ginger, they need three. So let's go. So if the production requirement for the month of October is 9,150, what will be the total production need for Atari? Each unit required five kilos of atari, and now they are going to produce what nine thousand one hundred and fifty. So will be the total production need. Good. So the total production need in terms of the atari will be so material usage. That should give us forty-five thousand seven fifty. How do we get this forty-five thousand seven fifty? It's nothing by. I want to show workings. So let me show workings here. 
Open a bracket, that is I am producing 9,150 by five kilos. And that give us 45,750. So they're working for the examiner, 45,750. Again, let's look for that of ginger. Ginger said three kilos, right? So again, 9,150 times what? Three kilos. The three kilos, this one give us Now give us twenty seven thousand four five zero. Okay, so twenty seven thousand four fifty. Twenty seven thousand. So twenty seven thousand four five zero. Okay. Now we are done with the material uses calculation. Let me do. Open inventory and the closing inventory. So let's select the open inventory. Let's the open inventory and add back your, your closing inventory. Now, before we do that, we need to get the inventory levels, inventory levels for that of what November, because they say it might be 10% of what the next month. So now can you get me the November? November, I thought you will be. Now, so they need five. But November production is what? 10,150. So it means that in November, the production needs of the company will be the five kilos of a by the 10,150. That's for the month of what? November. And that will give us 50,750. What about ginger? Ginger, they will need three. Kilos. So three kilos by 10,000 here, and I've got 30,000. So let me write somewhere here 30,450. Okay, so basically that is it. Now, they are saying that in the month of in the month of October, their closing inventory should be 10% of these figures. So let's find 10% on Atari, which is 50,750. And that will give us 5,075. But don't forget the quota. It says that it should not be worth more than 3,000. Agreed. So it should be more than 3,000. But this is 5,000. It's more than 3,000. What do you do? Clean and use your 3,000. So here, I write 3,000 as the closing inventory. Let's do for that of, for that of ginger. Ginger will be, okay, so let's take that side again. Now, they are saying that the closing inventory should be 10% of the following month production need. In November, what the production need? They need 50, 750. So 10% of it is nothing by, 5,075, but it's a quota in a question. They say it should not be more than 3,000. So in a situation where it's more than 3,000, I might say it was 3,000, not the figure. This 5,000 is more than 3,000. What do you do? They need a use word, 3,000, at the closing inventory. So the closing inventory should be 3,000, not the one that we get. Now let's go to Okay, so basically that is that. Now, for that of ginger, will be 10% of 3450. That will give us 3,045. Agreed. That one to still is more than what? 3,000. So that one to outclaim and record what? 3,000. It's not more than 3,000. Let's go to the open inventory. The open inventory, don't worry yourself. This is the strategy that we with with um, assume now. Anytime, anywhere to get a closing inventory is a percentage of the next month's own. Don't worry, the open inventory is the same as what that month's own. 
So don't worry at all. Open inventory for that of October should be same as 10% of what October's own load. So the open inventory here should be for 10% to give me 4, 5, 7, 5. Again, this is more than what? 3,000. So what do you do? Key in 3,000. So here must be 3,000. So you have key in 3,000 and subtract. Let's go to Ginger. Ginger will give me, in fact, 10% of this is 2, 4, uh, in fact, 2, 7, 4, 5. 2, 4, 5, 7, 4, 5. Again, this one is not more than what? 3,000. So this one I will maintain. I will get it. This is not more than 3,000. 2, 7 is not more than 3,000. So I don't believe it. What is the production? Can you do the calculation for me? And then let's pick it from there. So the production, sorry, the material purchases. I don't the production, this is material purchases. But it's material purchases, and then at the end of the game. Material purchases, okay. So basically, that is the answer. If you do the calculation well, you get something like, these are going to be the same as four five seven five zero. And eighteen thousand five hundred and fifty four ginger. Mm. I might not have uh, should be more than that. Thirty seven thousand seven hundred and five or seven and seven. Ginger, ah, my not that we with ginger. 27,195. 27,705. Can you write it down for me? 27,705. Good. I'm done with this particular one. Let's move on to the next section. The next one informs that direct material purchases for October in cities. What you've done is in what? Kilos. That is a in units and in what value. Uh -huh. So what you've done so far is in what and in value. In value, just multiply by what the material price or the material cost per unit. That's all. So multiply by what material cost or material price. That is all. So let's go. I had the what's the price? The future department expects the material to cost one of seven five per kilo. And I'm going to say this per kilo for ginger and what I can do. Here be a bit um, careful because you have changed it. Otherwise, it was five kilos of acadi and three kilos of what ginger. When it's giving you the price, it has given you the Ginger first, before that, you get on the in, you put to be um, 175 and 5, so it's going to be 5, So that one is the next one. I'll do that one here before we say bye bye to functional budget. And we start with the master budget. That conventional budget would be what you call master budget. So here, tell the examiner that this is III. Uh, material purchases um, budget. This bracket is in what? Series. So tell the examiner. Series. Uh, it's the month of October, only October. So tell us that the material purchases in kilos. So material purchases in kilos. Yes, yes. So material purchases is bracket in kilos. Uh, we have uh, ginger. Now I thought you should come first. And then ginger. That was 45. Seven five zero twenty seven seven zero five. That is on the material price. Uh, 
Five gamma series. 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 Material cost to you. I will try question is question seven and question eight. Can you try question seven first before question eight? And it's material, the material you have. All of them have been solved in the one of the videos. So all of them. We've solved them in the video. Gina is right there. Uh -huh. Let's see. Uh, let's see which of them is five. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. In fact, I thought it's five, and Ginger is one point seven five. Okay, so that's all. Yeah, I mean, we are not really we are not really that's the question. So, if you know what you're looking for, uh, that's not for you. So, don't that's August. August is not that it. July is not that it. Open information is allowed. Just a matter of what. Yes, it's not the best one. Uh huh. It's not super cool. If you touch it, but no, why don't you? Okay, let's tell you about budget. So you prefer the direct, direct manufacturing labor budget for October in cities. In cities, you need to get our next first before you can do the cities. That way you can do the cities. So take two. Okay, so let's really look at that one to say bye bye to the game. Can you multiply to put the answers in? Try to put the answers in. If wow, two hundred and twenty eight thousand seven fifty. If question have a lot of seven fifty pounds, lot of five, lot of seven. Most even like the seven that's five. Most even like the seven that's five. So uh forty-eight thousand one hundred and eighty-three dollars seventy-five. Oh you are there's seventy-five inside. But it's not point. Okay, so basically I'm done with this. Let me do the labor and, and, and wrap up with the functional budgets. All personal functional budgets. Okay. Let's go to the labor budget. So down to uh, we need uh, we need a production. Oh, we need a production. Okay, I'm not doing it. Okay, I'm going to production figure. It's one and a half dollars of seven inside. Four forty-five thousand seven fifty and twenty-seven thousand seven zero five. Okay, so let's take it off. Last but one. The budget taken is fifty mass. We so will do this correctly. Of course, seven already. So tell the examiner, I be direct manufacturing labor. So write it in full. No shortcut to beg you. No shortcut it to. Say direct manufacturing labor budget. Labor budget. No shortcut to interest for the month of October. Yeah, to let's go and read the question. Maybe the budget for labor they might also have different types of labor. Uh huh. Like the way they have in a time. Let's see here. The production process required that labor are at two scales levels. The rate for labor at school level one is 45 Ghana cities per hour. And for school level two, 
is in fact this per hour. Now, fine. Scale of one can project one batch. One batch of tumor can. That's the product per hour. Whilst the scale level two is double the time. Mm. We're going to use one hour. Let's go with what? Two hours. You've got double the time of the score level one. For the same output, each batch consists of 10 units. Mm. Okay. Let's do something. Each, each batch consists of what? 10 units. Now, something happened here. They are saying that there are three types of skill levels. So, level one, seniors. So, that's the senior staff. Skill level two, junior staff. They are saying that the senior people, skill level one, use one R to complete one batch or just a batch. So let me make it to open. So one hour, one badge. One hour, one badge. But they are saying that in each badge, how many units? 10. So meaning that one hour is equal to what? 10 units. That's all indirectly, because in a badge, you have 10 units. Good. 10 units. This is 10 and this is units. Let me write this more here. Uh -huh. 10 units. I'll be good at it. Now, tell me, it is like this. Each unit, how many hours do you need? Each unit, how many hours do you need? Then, uh, then read that each unit, how many hours? So each unit. So when the unit is one, what will be the hour? I don't know. Question mark. What multiply? Then do. So it means that it's equal to one out of ten, which is same as what zero dot what one. So zero dot one hour per unit. Now, if the senior staff or the small level one, they are using zero dot one hour for a, a unit, then these people they say double, double as this. So that means these people use two hours, right? The little group say, okay, two hours is now equal to what? 10 units. So therefore, units will be equal to two out of 10. They say my dot dot two. If you want trouble to do it yourself, just multiply this one, dot dot one R by what two. You get the same dot dot what two hours. And that is all, dot dot two. So in short, the requirement is zero dot one and zero dot two. That's the hours required. Let's work together again. Now we are saying that then this skilled labor, we have two types. The senior people, they are the skill labor one, but skill labor one, they can complete one badge in what they take one hour to complete a badge. How we get this? So you get this one. And then the governor said, in a batch, how many do you have? 10. So the same as these people do take one hour to complete what? 10 units. If I should end here, because a batch is the same as 10. How do you get it? Now, if you use one hour to complete 10 units, then the question is, each unit, each unit, one unit, how many hours are you going to spend? Uh -huh. Good. So how many hours are you going to spend? So do this and look for X for me. Each unit, bring the unit here. How many hours are you going to probably spend here? So if you got multiply, what do you get? Oh, get that examiner. Oh, I'm looking for one. So take the one. Divided by what you have, I have 10. That is all. So it's one out of 10. It is equal to zero dot what? One R. So that means each unit, there is zero dot what? One R. I will get it. Okay. Now let's go to the skill level two. 
Ascolă, la Q. Doamneze, vadeam cine asta. De timp, two times, as compared to what? The seniors. So, if the seniors are taking 0.1, and juniors will take what? 0.2, because two times. Agreed. I can also start analysis like this. For them to take two hours, right? It's equal to one batch. But I know that this two hours, is it? this one batch is human as well, ten units. So therefore, if two is equal to ten, what I need to be what? So that is one is equal to this. So it will be two out of what ten, which is equal to zero to what two. We don't like all this analysis that determiner. This answer. 0.1 r times what 2 basically then you are done so we'll be able to produce it again so now let's start with the labor budget so if i am looking for the rate that is uh we will look for the rate let's continue to get Okay, so I'll take this section off and start working in there. Small, start working in there. Let's start the game. So I'll start school level or school level one, senior staff and then junior staff. Grade one and grade two. Now here we need to find for the hours first before we can find for the price. So now hours required as on now. Hours required. So here I was required for school of one B zero dot one R find the production. And the production is 45,000. Uh, the production is not 45. Production is 9,150. I agree, that's the production. So, how many hours are they going to spend here? So, you did it. So, that will be 1915. For that of the second one, we know that two hours times nine one five dollars. And that one also will be twice of this. That's give us thirty thousand eight thousand eight thirty. So so thousand eight thirty. And it's all. This is the total hours required. Now bring the bring the labor cost or labor rate. The labor rate or the rate per hour. Uh, school level one is being paid 45 Ghana cities. School level two is being paid 25 Ghana cities. At the end of the day, this one no overtime. No overtime. No issue of what over time. I love the day what the labor cost. Labor cost to me. 915 by 45 and 1830 by 25. Basically, that is the end of the functional budget. How to prepare functional budget. Budget prepared by the very departmental. At all the departments, basically. Okay, so great. I get something like four one one seven five. Ah, uh, then I get something like forty five thousand seven five thousand. And it's the end of the game. Let's quickly go through the. Last section to see that I like to the particular section. Okay, no, I don't know the question for you. So the last section said budgeted income statement. That is what you call the master part. It's in the master part. So that means this one will push us to the master 
budget. Now, if you pick the master budget, master budget, element charges should be the master of. Let me turn this one. Now, when you pick a master budget, master budget simple means is the consolidation of all the functional budget together. Putting all the functional budget together as one, representing the organizational budget. That is all. So master budget is the combination of all the functional budget to produce the following. Number one, budgeted comprehensive income. Budgeted or comprehensive income, no shortcut. Number two, budgeted statement of financial position. So, budgeted statement of financial position, budgeted of comprehensive income, and finally, cash budgets. Again, a comprehensive master budget should include that is comprehensive. This is the main one that we know. And then the fourth one, in fact, I'll call it the functional budget. Functional budget. And so, so master budget is where you're going to bear budgeted profit and loss, budgeted financial position, and budgeted cash book, or that's the cash budget. And so. So let's see. So this question is about only the income statement. So let's look at the income statement to open our master budget question solving. How do we get this? So this question will just enlighten us in order to the master budget question solving. So let's start. Okay. We know that it's low. No. Already. Good. So here uh, we know the direct material cost. The direct material cost, you have to pick it from the total cost that we calculated and then we divide it and find the average cost per unit. Labor. Let's see this particular section. It is 100 Ghana cities per batch. 100 Ghana cities per what? Per batch. Each batch, we know that there are many units, 10 units. That means if it is 100 Ghana cities per the entire 10, each one is worth 10 cities. Perfect. Plus 75 Ghana cities per direct labor. That means the manufacturing variable overhead is in two folds. Ten Ghana cities per unit and 75 Ghana cities per that labor are good. Fixed production overhead is 51,240. It is the plan of every company to spend a third of the variable and fixed production overhead cost on selling and distribution expenses. Meaning that the selling and distribution expenses do a tag, one over three of what the, the variable and fixed production overheads. That is also a tag. So don't worry yourself, after calculating the total, uh, after calculating the total variable, Overhead and the fixed overhead, then you find what a third of its aggregate is. Then you quickly find a third of it, basically. So a third, so that is one third of the variable and the fixed overhead. Let's continue the game. The company is in 25% tax bracket but enjoys a rebate of 50% because of its location. The 
company is an actual cost system. Actual cost system. The unit cost of production in October is the same as that of what? September. Why are they saying this? Because there's some closing and open inventory so that we can, so that we can value the open inventory the same as the way we are going to value the October production unit. Good. Now the tax, there's a rebate. That means even though the tax rate is twenty five, there's a rebate, a reduction of what fifty percent. So find fifty percent of twenty five. That will give you twelve point five. So the actual tax rate that you have to use is what twelve point five. If there's a profit, don't forget I will pay tax on what on profit. So if you calculate a loss, move on. Don't pay tax on loss. So let's see how best you can put it. Income statement. So the income generated from where? Sales. Good. Is that for the sales? Or what we can do is this. We can also look for the cost per unit. We should calculate the actual cost per unit. So let's go calculate the actual cost per unit. But let's go to the board and set the tone. The source should be income statement, right? statement for the month of October. So let's go income statement for the month of October. This is what a master budget. Just that only the income statement appear. <laughs> I'm thinking about the financial position will also come visiting so that the question will be balanced. So we are the Uh, comment five. The examiner adjusted income statement. So for the month of what? October. Reporting points. And they say income statement. We want to answer in totality, not a unit basis. But you can go ahead and calculate for that to be for the open and then the closing items. Okay. Okay, so let's quickly start with the game. I thought my sales, that's the first thing I'll do. If I, if I can't do anything on the sales. October, they sold 9,000 units, right? So I'm going to 9,000 sales. Multiply by the selling price and put answer in. If I can't do anything, so that's that one. Will. So let's go and pick the selling price for the person. The second price is 75 per unit. So 75 per unit. So, so 675,000, 675,000. Um, now we are going to income statement. Okay. Uh, when we are buried income statement, for the alternative sections, alternative approaches less the cost of sales. That is that is the last word cost of sales. With this cost of sales, go straight forward. Pick the nine thousand times what the cost. That is all. Alternatively, if you don't like this approach, start with open inventory. So much. Come to production. So much. Come to closing inventory. So much. Before you now get the answer. So these two, any of them is a badge. Just move on. But the most simplest one, the first one, where now you pick only the sales unit. Because open inventory, um, in fact, Plus the production, you're not subtending the production. 
Oh, we even did like good access manager because they just give us all the seals. Uh huh. So take note of that. Okay, let's calculate the actual. We just get the actual cost of these goods. For example, I said the quality of the entity to value goods using what the actual cost. Let's talk about actual cost. So, working there is a actual cost calculation. Now, when at the time you're calculating cost, don't forget about the element of cost that material labor overhead and those tasks. Let's now that material. So, direct material cost. There are two materials here. Number one. So final answer, let me do one here. Number one is Atage. Atage, how many kg is on the price? Atage, they need five kg or five kilos at what? Five Ghana cities. So therefore, we get 25 cities. Let's go to Ginger. Ginger two, they need uh, three kg times 1.75. That give us 5.25. So material cost should be there. So total material cost is 30.25. Okay. Let's go to direct labor. That labor to there are two types. Standard, sorry, skill level one. And with that one, we need 0 0.1 up times the rate of what 45. Now she give us four to five. Friends of mine, how we get it? But, and then uh, we go to skill level two. That one they need your dot two times what? Ghana city of 25. So that will give us something like five. Okay, so putting this together, I get 9.5, right? Okay, continuation. Where should I continue? I love the um, variable cost. We are looking for the actual cost or actual manufacturing or cost. We are looking for actual manufacturing cost. So let the factory overhead, the variable, and then the fix. So let's go in for the factory overhead. Let's go in for the factory overhead. Factory overhead. So let's go in for the factory overhead. Just that, unfortunately, uh, my space is not big enough. I don't look in the main board. That we have to do the same place again. Try to answer somewhere. So I did answer somewhere. Thirty point two five and nine point five. So that I can clean it. I'm not clean it. Okay, so I'm going to take it off so that I can continue the calculation. Let me take the first one off. I'll be taking them one after the other. The next one is what overhead. So overhead or production overhead. You can tell the now production was overhead. Now the production overhead, in fact, there are two. Let me just be straight for variable production overhead. Now let's go to the variable production overhead from the question. That will tell us how she calculated. Is hundred uh, is hundred Ghana city per bag. If it's per bag, you mean that sorry, each bag they have ten Ghana uh, ten units. So that means each unit to be got that will be ten Ghana cities plus seventy five per that labor hour. So but the labor hours they are what two. Because each type of power is still going for 75. That is all. So, in short, the power production overhead will be number one, will be the 
Ter Baj. So this one is Ter Baj. That one is Tengana City. Ter Baj is what? Tengana City. So the Baj. The Baj. If you can get 100 divided by what? 10. Then we go to the, the one that per labor hours. So that one, it will be 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 odd labor hours times gamma CD of 75. Okay, so odd labor hours times 75. So you get um, 0 0.3 by 75. Um, now the labor, uh, we have the soil type one, they need zero dot one, so type two, they need zero dot two. So put it up together, zero dot three, by the 75 Ghana cities. So you get your 22.5, right? The labor are to be 32.5. That's the bubble production overhead. Now let's go to the fixed production overhead. Fixed production overhead. Let's go to the question. For the fixed production overhead, I'm saying that the fixed production overhead is 51,250. It is, it is the plan of the maker company to spend a sort of desirable. Oh, okay. Now we need to use the production level. You know, the fixed production overhead needs to be absorbed. Using the production was level. So if the production is 9,150, to calculate the overhead absorption rate. So this is the budgeted overhead, and then the activity level is 9,150. So we should not forget about that. So let's see. How best we can do this? So this one, we just have to take the examiner fifty one thousand. Uh, fifty one thousand two forty. Fifty one thousand two forty. All divided by. Let me do the division like this. 9,150, this is the production unit to and get 5.6, uh, right? Yeah, okay, so I don't really let them all together and let's see the figure for that of the total actual cost. Total actual cost. To the actual cost. And then we are almost getting to it. So the, the actual cost, putting everything together, gets 77.85. Double and line is. So let's come in here and come and calculate this continual cost of sales. Have you seen? If you need any figure, you pause and then go look for it. Then before you move on. So let's see. So the cost of sales should be at 9,000 times 77.85 as a cost of sales. Can you take note of this side? I'm about to take it off. So the cost of sales should be, let's multiply. So 9,000 times 77.85 uh, should give me something like 700,650. The mm. date value 700,650. Can you subtract it? Mm. 700,650. Seven 
Okay, so 7,965. Mm, no, I'm not part of this. Okay, so meaning I can take this section off, right? Okay, so nice. Okay, so basically, gross profit, right? Call it gross worth loss. Twenty five thousand seven fifty, right? So six five. So kindly put it in market. Let's selling and distribution the cost. So let's selling and distribution cost. So selling. And distribution. So that's the only call that let's let me unpick down from the question and say bye bye to this question. You are saying that it is a plan of maybe company to spend a third of a variable and fixed production of our cost on selling and administrative for my I like that. So it means that the selling cost will be third, one third of the total face cost, and one third of what the variable production overheads. That is all. So let's get a of that one. Okay, let's get a that one. Now, a third. A third of the variable. So the fixed cost state for that one is there. Now this variable cost, don't forget to use the production. So kindly, uh, in fact, I claim my solution. Uh, you have it. Go to the actual cost calculation under the variable production overhead. If memory is getting correct, I have ten there and I have twenty two point. Five, right? It's already get the units. We have 10 and 22, right? Okay, don't worry. All what you have to do is can you put this 10 and 22 together? Put this 10 and 22 together. You get 32, right? Good. Now the variable component will be the 32, this 32. Times the production unit. No. Variable production. So 32 times the production unit. Production is 915, right? And then the selling will take what? One third out of it. That is all. From the answer. It's 32. So go to our actual cost calculation. Take the 10 and 22, multiply by the production. Why multiply by production? Because it's about the production cost. Don't forget that even though selling cost should be on sales, but this selling cost is as a percentage of the production cost. So first of all, get the production cost first. So this is the production cost. From here to here is the production cost. Before the selling cost, you take a third of it. That is all. I'll be getting it. So in short, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to again. Sorry, man. So the terminal less selling. And distribution costs are right here. Variable production over here. Let's do the calculation here 32.5 times 915 times 103. And then you give the answer. Basically, so 99,125. Okay, then you go to fixed. Fixed production over. Don't worry about yourself. Fixed production over. They've given to us already. So go take that figure and strike one third out of it. The fixed production was the same, fifty-one thousand two forty. So take fifty-one thousand two forty and strike one third out of it. So one third out of it should give us something. So this should give us seventeen thousand and eighty. Basically, we are done. So this one give us a net loss. Net loss before tax. Net loss before tax. Now, 
After getting this answer, can you move one step again to the examiner? Income tax and put that there. Then the examiner loss of a tax. How we get it? Uh -huh. So put all these together. All of these are lost. So they will increase the company's loss, overall loss. So that's something like 141,000, right? 141,855. Putting all these laws together, 141,855. Basically, that is how best we can solve this question. If I do not know, then my right income tax and put that there. Don't pay tax on loss. Don't pay tax on loss. The next line, right? Loss after tax, being the same figure there. And I know this is how far the good Lord will bring us. And next meeting, we'll continue with the remaining type of the budget preparation. But you should not end here. Now, the remaining one should be dealt with in the particular We've already gone to the part one and two, talks about the theory aspects of the budget, like what we do today, the budgetary control, participatory, the style of budgeting, the real aspect of budgeting, all those stuff. Take note. Then the functional budget, this is a question, master, and this is a solution to question seven, and then some part of question 12. All these are functional budgets. This is the uh, question number eight. The question eight. Very interesting. Can you go through cash budgets? I'm begging you. Go through cash budgets and the master budgets and flexible budgets. What I'll do is this. I'll just, meet, I'll just pick one question under each and solve them. I may not be able to probably explain to each other, but this videos have the detailed explanation. Everything you need is covered in this video. Uh, so can we take notes of this? So realize that there were a lot of items that we don't need. For instance, when we take this particular question, uh, some September in the living that is seven thousand or getting that is six thousand learning that so don't worry yourself about that. Okay, so now this is how far the good Lord will bring us. We will meet again when we meet. But if you do have a question, kindly don't forget to let me have all your questions there through the comment section or through any of the contact handles. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe. Remember that. Okay, so first online question time.